In this video, I would like to explain to you the difference between AMD chipsets A620, B650 and X670. I will explain the difference between motherboards based on these chipsets and what does the magical E letter means that some motherboards have in their chipset names. I hope this video will make motherboard selection for your next AM5 build a lot easier. Let's begin. If you open AM5 board section on Newegg or whatever shop you're using in your region, you might think that AMD has like 5 chipsets. In reality, of course, they have only 3. In fact, I think it's even the same silicon, which I will explain to you a little later in this video. Every Ryzen 7000 CPU is capable of 24 PCI Express 5.0 lanes and 4 USB 10 gigabit ports. So any AM5 motherboard can utilize these 24 lanes from the CPU and have at least one X16 slot and dual M.2 slots. This is where you need the chipset. It provides additional features to the board, more PCI Express lanes, USB ports, SATA ports. You also need to understand that additional features like integrated sound, Wi-Fi, Ethernet all require PCI Express lanes to work and they're all connected to the chipset and take some of those PCI Express lanes. AMD also uses something they call flexible PCI Express lanes in their chipsets. Here's an example. Let's take a 620 chipset that has 8 PCI Express 3.0 lanes. Four of those lanes are used for integrated devices, another four can be used for extra PCI Express lanes or SATA ports, or a little bit of both. So a typical A620 board might only get one or two extra PCI Express lanes available for user. Besides the CPU lanes, of course. So it's very important to understand how this works. Obviously, you do not expect to have all of the CPU and chipset features on every motherboard. A cheaper board might have 4.0 lanes instead of 5 for the CPU lanes and a single M.2 or a low USB port count, all to keep the price down. And before we touch the chipsets themselves, it's important you understand what the magical E letter means that some motherboards have in their name might think it's extreme overclocking or some other amazing product defining features, but actually it's only PCI Express. An E motherboard will have X16 slot using 5.0 lanes and at least one M.2 using 5.0 lanes, and that's it. It only means the board is capable of 5.0 for the GPU and M.2. A manufacturer can create a horrible motherboard, but put an E in the name just because they included PCI Express 5.0 lanes. So having an E in the name in no way represents a good motherboard. But if you want 5.0 version for your GPU lanes, you should look for an E-board. Now back to the chipsets. The most affordable and budget-friendly chipset is A620. It provides up to 8 PCI Express lanes, but they're flexible as I told just a little earlier. These are the most affordable and simplest motherboards with minimum features, but most of the time they're more than enough for an average user. A620 allows you to overclock RAM without any limitations, but no CPU overclocking is allowed. Most of the A620 boards have limited CPU power delivery for only 6 or 8 core CPUs and only one M.2. Manufacturers also use cheaper integrated sound, cheaper Ethernet, cheaper Wi-Fi if any Wi-Fi is available. All this is to keep the boards affordable. But you should not consider them bad boards, because building a very budget-friendly system based on Ryzen 5 7500F and an A620 board is a great option for affordable gaming. If you spend a little bit more time on researching the right board for your build or find a good deal, you can get a very excellent board capable of running something like 7950X. Though, I would not recommend running 7950X on an A620 board, but VRM would definitely be capable. Some manufacturers have top-of-the-line A620 boards that cost like B650. I do not recommend those, better buy B650 in the first place. So A620 is a great budget option if you spend a little more time researching the right board for your build. Next is a B650 chipset. This chipset has no overclocking limitation, so you can finally overclock whatever you want from your CPU and RAM. Intel limits their non-Z chipsets for CPU and RAM overclocking, but there are no such limitations here from AMD. B650 has plenty of USB ports, including four 10 gigabit USB ports and one 20 gigabit USB port, which is enough for like 99% of the people. It also has 12 flexible PCI Express lanes with up to four SATA ports, also enough for most. Most of the B650 boards will have up to three M.2s. Many of B650 boards, even non-E ones, have one of those M.2 running 5.0 lanes. 
most of B650 boards has a decent enough VRM to run something like 7800X3D, while more expensive boards are usually capable of running even 7950X. There is absolutely no need to buy a very expensive board if you need to run 7950X. The absolute most mid-tier AIM-5 boards are capable of running 7950X without any problems. And here is the best part. You don't need to buy an X670 board at all. B650 has full overclocking, it has enough features for most of people, and if you want to get more feature-rich expensive motherboard, it makes sense to go for B650E instead of going X670. It's not Intel, you don't need to go for Z motherboard to get all the features, B650 has them all. I plan to make a separate video about B650 eboards, so if you like that, thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel. Next is X670 chipset, which is actually a very simple chipset. AMD designed B650 in such a way so it can be connected to another B650 and act as a single chipset and have its features combined. X670 is basically two B650 chipsets presented as one. Obviously, X670 boards are more expensive because of the dual chipsets and more sophisticated board design, but it's great when you need a very feature-rich board and you're willing to pay extra for it. But if you just don't have a need in dual 20 gigabit USB ports, 4 to 5 M.2s, 6 to 8 SATA ports, most of the time there's just no need to pay extra. But if a good price deal presents itself on a decent X670 e board, it's definitely a good option to consider. Now, just to be very clear, if we take absolutely identical B650 and X670 boards, X670 is going to be more expensive while providing no extra value. It is not Intel. You do not need to buy most expensive chipset to get all the feature set. B650 has everything unlocked, so unless you need those extra M.2s or extra PCI Express lanes, you do not need to buy an X670 board. Also keep in mind this. If you see a very affordable X670 e-board, do not run and buy it. Ask yourself, where did the manufacturer cut corners in order to achieve this price? Maybe the integrated sound is bad. It may have no Wi-Fi at all. Maybe one of those M.2s share PCI Express lanes with some of the PCI Express slots and I am unable to use all of them. In terms of CPU power delivery, I haven't seen a single X670 motherboard that wasn't capable of running 7950X. Because the minimum price tag for these motherboards is usually around $200 US, you can't really get a bad VRM with this kind of price tag. And more expensive boards will have a ridiculously overkill VRM with a huge heatsink. Actually, with any chipset, at $200 you get a really good VRM and you should stop bothering about will it be able to run my CPU or not. And I guess that's it for X670, but here's a very important general advice that is chipset independent. Please make sure you read motherboard specifications in order to understand are you getting all the features you require. Here is an example. Every motherboard has an X16 PCI Express slot and maybe some extra PCI Express slots that can be X1, X2, X4, etc. You may need that special extra PCI Express port just to put your sound card, for example. And you need to make sure it works all the time. Some motherboards may share PCI Express lanes between M.2s and extra PCI Express slots. So if you populate that, for example, third M.2, this extra PCI Express slot will just stop working. In order to avoid that, you should read the motherboard specifications and sometimes manuals. And here's another interesting topic. This is A620 and B650, and they look absolutely identical. I think it's probably the same silicon, just A620 being a stripped down version of B650. So I guess they just disabled some features and called it A620. This is basically binning just like with CPUs. And you already know that X670 is just dual B650, so AMD is probably using the same silicon for all chipsets. Now you know everything you need to buy a decent AM5 board without overpaying for something you don't need. A620 is a great option to buy a very cheap board that has all the features required for an ordinary person and that can easily run Ryzen 5 7500F.
V650 is a great chipset that ranges from very, very affordable and good motherboards to very expensive top-of-the-line motherboards. And most importantly, it has all of our clocking features available. And X670 is top-of-the-line, very expensive boards with great feature sets, but most of the people should stay on V650. That's really all you needed to know. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe for future content. And thumbs up if you like the video. Thanks. And I guess I'll see you in the next one.